Hi guys, so today we are having a look at the Inglot Cover Up and Highlight Duo. I have got the shade 101. These are £16 and you've got 6.6ml of product. Don't know if that's each side or total. I think it's total actually. So, this is one of their newer products and bizarrely given some of the kind of drama and uproar that's been in the beauty industry at the moment, this comes in a grand total of five shades. So that's, I would say that's pretty poor. So they do say that it's a waterproof product, um, a strong coverage concealer providing a powder finish and a light creamy highlighter for a subtle illumination of the skin. Concealer focuses on covering skin discolorations, imperfects and imperfections and even out its tone. Do, 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 Yeah. Anyway. So, handy, minimalist packaging fits small cosmetic bags or even tiny clutch bags. A real game changer, a line for quick touch-ups at the parties, in the office. It really says at the parties, not just at parties. <laughs> in the office, on a date or while travelling. So, I'm just going to give you an idea of the shade range here. Um, so... You know, it's not the most inclusive, to put it mildly. And, you know, the fact that the shades are kind of that stepped apart suggests that this isn't going to be the highest, highest coverage. So I even got asked if I wanted to be a shade up from this, um, which is this this one. Just don't think it's going to work out for me. Um, which I don't even remember looking that dark on the counter and I just remember thinking was a little bit on the yellow side. So as I said, £16 or consider £8 for a little concealer and £8 for a little illuminator. I've used these today and I will show you how I get on. Right, so as you can see I've already got my foundation on so it's just the concealer to go. Um, I really hope this is the right shade but we will talk about the shade choice in my kind of conclusion on this. So we've just got a normal doe foot applicator. Okay. Doesn't seem to pick up a lot of product, but then maybe that should be a hint that this is a pigmented product. So I'm gonna try blending that out rather than continuing to slap more on. doesn't seem to be the most pigmented of concealers that I've tried but it's very brightening and it's very smooth. I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit so that you can see some more. So yeah it looks nice and bright and smooth. Just the same on this side. It is blending out nice and easily. And yeah, I definitely don't think I needed much more of it, do I? I never use a corrector underneath my concealer when I'm testing a concealer. And part of me thinks I should because that's what I would normally do. And part of me just wants to know that, you know, we're really just rating the concealer on its own performance and not having it affected by loads of other products. So it does seem to be kind of buildable, but... Yeah, definitely not the highest coverage for dark circles. That being said, as long as I'm not holding my head like this, they look pretty good. So that's fine. And then I always need extra help on my nose, nose corners. Chin needs a little bit of help. So I'm quite thankful this colour is actually blending into my skin. So that's something. I'm thinking this would maybe be best as an under eye concealer after you use a corrector and not necessarily as an all over concealer 
but for the sake of reviewing we're gonna try it out because I still feel like I want some kind of cover on my nose this is a bit more brightening perhaps more than coverage um, which is fine you know it just depends what you're looking for um, I'm gonna put a little bit more on my forehead just to kind of even tones out because this is a pretty pale shade and then I'm gonna get this set down and we'll come back and try the highlighting side so we will be right back of the face is finished and if anybody is wondering the lipstick is also in Glot and it's number 264 so going into the highlighting illuminating side of this product we have got a little brush and I'm just gonna dot this along my cheekbone and tap it in so this is quite a, a thicker liquid concealer which is what not liquid concealer liquid highlighter which is why I kind of felt okay with putting it on on top of my foundation but it has still disturbed it a little bit so where is the brush I like to use for that I'm going to do my other side with a brush so I'm just going to paint some on so what I do is I put some on a natural bristle brush hoping that some of the um, moisture from the product gets absorbed by the natural bristles and then disturbs my foundation less. Also, bristles are softer than my finger. So let's see how this side turns out. In fact, I've put on way too much so I'm going to do both sides. Yeah, but I've put on way too much product. Oopsie. So I'm going to sit and blend this out for about five minutes. Um, I have a non-wet beauty blender. Okay, I have definitely destroyed my foundation for today. Let's see what we can do with this. It's definitely a quite natural highlight, I would say. Um, other than where it's removed your foundation and is painfully obvious. <laughs> Right, I'm going to try and smooth that out a little bit and be back. Hey, repairs have been undertaken. So, yeah, I would say this is a very, very subtle highlight, which, to be honest, I was kind of expecting. Um, when I see these double-ended products, I always think they're kind of aimed at people who are on the go and, you know, minimal kind of makeup look. So we will try this out for the rest of the day. It is actually just about 12 o'clock just now, but I know I'm going to be up quite late tonight anyway. So we will be back, we'll do check-ins, and we will see how the concealer's held up and the highlighter. So I'll be back. Okay, so I didn't end up filming any check-ins because to be honest, I didn't have much to update you on. So it is 10 past 12, so I'm going to zoom you in. We'll have a look-see. As you can see, my under eye area still looking pretty good in coverage. My nose is worn away a little bit, but not drastically. And yeah, we're still looking pretty fairly mattified in the areas that I used this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with this again tomorrow, because what I want to see is how well it does with a corrector underneath it. Um, but also after the kind of slight mess up that we had with the highlighter, I'm going to try it before I do my powder and see if it shows through at all because it is a very, very, very subtle highlighter. So my kind of worry is that if I put it on before my powder, it's kind of not going to show up at all. Um, just so you can see kind of how subtle it is there. So we will have a look at that tomorrow and I'll be back. Okay, hey, so round to playing with this concealer and highlighter. So I'm going to use my under eye corrector today um, just to see how it plays with that. Because um, I didn't do it the other day, just wanted to see how the coverage would be on its own. 
Dun, 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 dun. But yeah, so as ever, blending everything with my Nanshi foundation brush. Brush. And um, we're also going to play with the highlighter again today. Uh, we're going to do it before powder and see if there's you know anything visible after I set my makeup. So we will see. We will see. See. Her. Again, I kind of wish more product came out on this applicator, um, but yeah, it's the way it is. Because I feel like I have to dunk in quite a lot just to do, you know, my normal, my normal unavoidable areas. Which is my under eye and around my nose and then some bits on my chin. So, and I just blinked into that. Brilliant. <laughs> so it's still blending really easily. That's nice. It's actually going further than it did yesterday. Maybe I didn't need as much as I just put on. Especially since I already had the corrector going. It's a very nice brightening concealer. I do like that about it. Okay, so the corrector definitely helped, but it's still definitely not the most high coverage of concealers that I've tried. So, finish blending this out, and then we will get back to do the highlight. Okay, so let's try this illuminator again. Hopefully it's not going to disturb my foundation too much since, you know, I've not set it, but we will see, we will see, we will see. Little dots along my cheekbone. It's definitely a very, very subtle highlight which is not my usual go-to um i mean just being bluntly honest about it i'm quite chubby in the face um so <laughs> i go for a very visible highlight so that i can try and make my cheekbones stand out but yeah it barely looks like i've highlighted anything there and that's before we went in with the setting powder so I'm going to use the Revolution um, baking powder in lace and my big, big fluffy brush from Kiko to love. It's so cute, it's got flowers on it. Um, so I usually set my under eye area first just because it's the area I have to be most careful with. So can I try and get it out of the way and then I can go crazy just setting everywhere else so do, do, do. sorry if you can hear a banging there's some construction work going on somewhere near my flat or destruction work and it hasn't stopped for the last couple of days Okay, so we are set, and I don't know about you guys, but I can see pretty much nothing. I mean, there's an area, when I look really close, there's an area where my powder has kind of grabbed differently than the rest, but, you know, there's not really highlight going on there so overall I am not going to be repurchasing this I think it's a nice light coverage concealer if that's illuminating if that's what you're after but personally I need a little bit more coverage than this can give me especially in the under eye area and the highlight it's too subtle when you put it under powder and it doesn't play well with other products if you put it on on top of powder so personally 
No, I'm putting this in the goodbye category. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, please leave those down below and I will get back to you. And I will see you guys later.